Hi, good to see everybody here this evening. They're getting in through the rain tonight. Who'd have thunk it? Almost December 1st tomorrow, and we have windows open to keep it cool enough in here. And uh, 60 degrees. It was 63 degrees when I was coming to church tonight. And uh, not complaining. Hallelujah. I'll take it as long as we can get it. Amen. Felt like San Diego, Brother Bowman. And uh, <laughs> you're all right. You brought that with you. Amen. That's great. Well, it's good to see everybody here tonight. Take a songbook. Let's sing together, shall we? Uh, let's see. We're going to do 323. 323, standing on the promises. You can't do that while you're sitting down, so let's all stand together. 323 and Brother Bob will lead us. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let His praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God, on that third, standing on the promises of Christ the Lord. Bound to him eternally by love's strong cord, overcoming daily with the spirit's sword, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises. Of God, standing on the promises I cannot fall, listening every moment to the Spirit's call, resting in my Savior as my all in all. I'm standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing. singing tonight and again thanks for being here and uh glad everybody got here safely and uh let's start with a word of prayer shall we father we bow before you in prayer tonight we thank you lord for your goodness to us through another week and for the privilege again for us to gather together here in the middle of the week and lord we bow before you here at the beginning of the service and ask you to meet with us tonight give us what we need in this service here this evening lord you know what we need better than we do and I pray that each of us would be open and, and we'd be careful to listen, whether it's a song we sing, uh, the fellowship together, the prayer request, the prayer time, the missionary letter, and of course the study of your word. Lord, use it in our lives uh, to mold us and to make us, to conform us more to the image of Christ because we were together here this evening. We love you, Lord. May your will be done in our midst tonight. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, you may be seated. 413 together, 413, love lifted me. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. On that first together, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Very quickly stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the water lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. All my heart to him I give, ever to him I cling. In his blessed presence live, ever his praises sing. Love so mighty and so true, merits my soul's best song. Faithful, loving service do to him belong. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When else 
This evening's uh, missionary message is from Rex and Mary Cobb of BBTI. Dear family and friends, this has been a good year for us. We are so blessed to be involved in what we consider the most important work in all the world, sending the gospel of Christ to the ends of the earth. We are very thankful for your faithful prayers and financial help throughout this year that have allowed us to give our full attention to the work and training of new missionaries for the foreign field. Some of our younger students this year are not yet sure what foreign field they will serve on. We have one couple going to a closed Northeast Asian country, another to Cape Verde, Africa, another to a Navajo nation, a single lady is planning, planning to go to Liberia, Africa, and a single man to the unreached tribes of the Amazon area. The Lord enabled me uh, to travel quite a bit this fall to present the ministry of BBTI in Bible colleges in Illinois, California, and North Carolina. I will be going to another college in Florida in a few days. Please pray that the Lord will send us more students for the next class that begins in August. We have room for more, especially with the most recent addition to our student housing. The double wide modular house is almost ready for occupancy. We are working on the interior and the Lord has already provided us enough metal for the new roof for it and a couple other houses. We praise the Lord that he has kept us in good health during 2016 and he has provided all of our needs both personal and ministry. We are planning a trip to Peru, South America during Christmas break to visit Lily and her family. The other girls are still in the same places serving the Lord and with their husbands and children. Elena in Minnesota, Sarah in Toronto, Elizabeth in Oklahoma City. Elizabeth gave us our 14th grandchild this year. A boy named Nicholas James, what is happening in your world? We hope to hear from you one day soon. They have a new email address, and if you don't mind, I'll put it on the table down there. Uh, may you have a Christ-filled Christmas and wonderful New Year's. Missionaries training missionaries, Rex and Mary Cobb. Good to hear from the Cobbs, amen. All right, got your uh, prayer guide tonight. Anybody need one? Put your hand up, they'll get it to you. Everybody good? All right. We start on the back with uh, the coming events, and of course we have the RU Inside tomorrow night down at CRC. We're looking forward to getting back there, and uh, we'll be down there tomorrow night at 6.30, and then uh, RU right here at the uh, at church on Friday night, 7 o'clock to 9 p.m. on Friday evenings, and then uh, the... London one this Saturday, they, I just got a note from Danny Wright tonight, they canceled that for this Saturday, they have something special going on uh, at the prison, so they won't be there Saturday morning, but uh, those guys will get to come to men's breakfast, how about that, and uh, amen, so men's breakfast Saturday morning at 8.15, of course we'll still have our soul winning and bus visitation at 10, there'll be others who'll be uh, decorating the church during that time, and that's fine. Uh, we'll have our normal soul winning and bus visitation at 10. Ladies, your night out is uh, 
Monday night at 6 o'clock, and uh, you're going to have a great time uh, Monday evening. If you haven't signed up yet, get your name on that list. I think it might, the last I looked, both pages were full, by the way, Brother Bob. So just stick your name somewhere on there. They'll get it, and uh, they'll expect you on Monday evening. The 11th is the Children's Christmas Program at 545. The 17th is a Saturday morning. We'll be going caroling that morning, so make a note of that if you would. That's always a, a great time together uh, for us to do that. Um, other requests, underneath uh, other requests there, would you write down Maggie Handy? Uh, some of you know Maggie Handy and um, Richard. Uh, Richard is a bigger guy and beard and such, and uh, Richard passed away on Saturday. Uh, she, they were scheduled to go to dinner, and... Uh, she went out to wait for him. They had gotten ready, and she went out in the truck to wait for him, and he didn't come out. She went back in, and he had had a massive heart attack. And uh, so he, he is now home with the Lord. And uh, so that's uh, pray for Maggie, all right? I think she's down in West Virginia right now with family. And so uh, please keep her in your prayers. So Maggie Handy, if you, her address is in the uh, directory. And uh, if you want to send a card to her, I'm sure she would appreciate hearing from you, Okay. Um, so we pray for that, and then the uh, praise reports from the on Saturday at London. They had 15 guys at the Are You Inside There, one new and one saved. And I should have put on here too. I believe they're heading back from the Philippines. Uh, Brother Burks and uh, was a team of went there, Pastor Kingsbury and uh, several others, and I believe they're coming back with right around 500 charters to start. Reformers Unanimous in the Philippines, and uh, that's pretty amazing. You figure, you know, we have a little over a 1,000 chapters in the United States in 20 years. They just picked up 500 in a, in, in a few days to, to be there, and they, they have more to go yet, uh, conferences to be in and such, and so just an amazing, amazing response there, and so they're excited about that and continue to pray for God opening that door for them in the Philippines, okay? Uh, of course, the health needs that are here, continue to pray for those, and we pray for these who are in authority uh, in the transition of uh, leadership in our country, uh, praying for our military tonight, and, of course, those who battle cancer, uh, these on our salvation list, praying that God will uh, put someone in their path who will witness to them and give them the gospel who they'll listen to. Our unreached people groups that we pray for this week are listed there. And then our missionaries uh, highlighted by the Cobbs and their ministry there with BBTI. Uh, on your health list, I, um, if you'll add um, Joy Hall. Uh, now, some of you new ones don't know who Joy Hall is, but some of the uh, more seasoned members will remember Joy Hall. And uh, Joy is, oh, how old is Joy now? 85, somewhere in there, mid-80s, and uh, she's, she has three vertebrae that are causing some real pain, and uh, she asked for prayer from the church, so uh, please, please keep Joy Hall in your prayers. I know she would appreciate us doing that, okay? All right, I'd like Brother Dave Yoder to come if he would, and uh, Brother Yoder, lead us in prayer tonight uh, for our prayer time together and uh, appreciate Brother Yoder and Brother Moreland. Brother Moreland's up in Millersburg I think this evening uh, for a meeting there. Um, there uh, if anybody has a small microwave these guys could use that and uh, anybody have an extra one that they maybe can donate to the 1040 International. Uh, these guys would really uh, appreciate the use of a small microwave. So if you can, see myself, see Brother Yoder, and he'll take care of it from there. All right? But let's go to prayer together, and Brother Yoder, you lead us tonight. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your goodness and your kindness to us. What a privilege it is to be able to meet again and hear from the Word of God tonight. We'd ask that you'd soften our hearts to be receptive to what we will hear. And again, we thank you for allowing us to be here, uh, not just uh, because of our health, which we're thankful about, but also because of the blessings that you've heaped upon our country. We'd ask now, Lord, that you would allow that to continue. Uh, I pray that our nation would be uh, focusing on you instead of the things and problems around them. Uh, because you're the answer for everything that we need. Yes, 
And that's why we come before you tonight, humbling ourselves down, uh, not hoping that you're going to hear us, but knowing full well that you hear everything that we say and ask uh, in your name. Lord, we would ask that you'd be with uh, Brother Cobb tonight and his wife as they try to raise support there at BBTI, what a great work they're doing and a tremendous needed work that they're involved in. And we'd ask, Lord, that you keep your hand upon them. We thank you for this uh, report here from the Philippines, this uh, Brother Burks that's come back here in these uh, charter churches and so forth. Uh, I pray, Lord, that that would uh, be just a good starting point for them and it would expand and that you would place the workers there that, that they need to be able to run that ministry. We thank you for our men here that are so faithful uh, doing the prison ministry and the RU and uh, I pray, Lord, that you would uh, give those on Saturday a time of refreshment there with the men at the breakfast and those that are involved in this, that you would be very near to them and be an encouragement, not just for them, but for the people that they will speak to. Uh, again, Lord, we thank you for allowing us to, as a church, to have part in that. Lord, we would pray for this uh, Maggie and the loss of her husband. Uh, Lord, you, you understand that situation, well, all the whys and everything that's hooked to that. But, Lord, we'd ask that you would uh, just comfort her at this time. I pray for uh, Mrs. Hall, that you'd help her with her back problems that she was having. Uh, Lord, I remember her being faithful for so many years here in this church, and I'd ask now that you'd help her with her needs at this time. We, we would pray for the various ministries of our church. We think of our pastor, that you would uh, continue to help him with his health, be able to just get over this cold that he has, and then uh, strengthen him for the future. We thank you for Brother Bob and how he helps hold up the arms of our preacher, the loyal man that he is. I'd ask that you bless him and his family. Lord, we would ask for those involved in and the nursing ministry and boss ministry and just the various outreaches, even the, the teachers uh, teaching the Glow Club right now, we'd ask that you would bless them. Uh, Lord, we thank you for your kindness, and we can't stress it enough, the health that you've given us. Lord, we know that that could just change in an instant. So while we have breath, while we have clarity of thought, we want to thank you for giving us good health tonight. I would pray for our military that you would watch over them and keep them safe as they defend our country. Uh, Lord, you know what is on the horizon for them and the different traps that have been set for them. I pray that you'd give them wisdom, Lord, and, and protect them and, and keep their families in good spirits uh, at this time. We pray for those that have been on the cancer list uh, that uh, may be in great pain at this time. I pray, Lord, that you would... Uh, uh, touch them. Lord, we'd ask that they'd be healed. We pray that your will would be done. Sometimes your ways are so much higher than our ways that we don't really uh, know what's happening, why. But Lord, we want to tell you that we trust you in everything that you do. And so we'd ask on behalf of these people that you would help them. We pray for the ones on the salvation list that we've been praying for for um, many, many years. And, Lord, we're not going to be weary in well-doing. It's just we want to bring them before you once again, and we'd like to see them saved before it's eternally too late. We pray about these unreached people groups. We thank you that we have a, a 1040 International that's going to try to do some translating to get the word of God to them. But I pray, Lord, you'd also send missionaries to these individual groups. I pray that there would be slack in their laws and their government would have favor and allow us to be able to get to them. Again, Lord, we want to thank you for our missionaries that are around the world uh, giving the gospel out uh, so that people could be saved. And again, Lord, we're just uh, so privileged to call ourselves Christians. I pray, Lord, that you would uh, let us not forget uh, who we represent. Uh, Lord, we want to tell you that we love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 
507507 Come thou fount of every blessing Tune my heart to sing thy grace Let's all stand together as we sing 507 on that first together Come thou fount of every blessing Tune my heart to sing thy grace Streams of mercy never ceasing Call for songs of loudest praise Teach me some melodious song and <clears throat> tongues above praise the mount I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise mine Ebenezer, hither by thy help I'm come, and I hope by thy good pleasure. To arrive at home, Jesus sought me when a stranger wandering from the foot of God. He to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood. Amen. You uh, can drink, greet one another, make somebody feel welcome, especially our guests. We'll come back and sing that last stanza together. Jesus sought me when a stranger 
wandering from the fold of God, here to rescue me from danger, interpose his precious blood. Let's sing that last together. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be on that last. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness like a fetter bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. All right, you can be seated. Ushers will come and get our offering tonight. And a reminder, on December the 18th, we have our uh, Christmas offering. And uh, all it is is you, you know, Christmas is time where we give gifts to others, but you surely shouldn't leave the Lord off your list. And uh, one of the things that we've been looking at for the choir, and the choir will appreciate this, is uh, the a piano for downstairs uh, where they warm up every Sunday morning and Sunday night. Uh, that piano is... Uh, very difficult. Uh, it uh, it doesn't have the right notes or anything, and it's uh, and it's and it's difficult too because that kind of piano, w the temperature varies so much and the humidity varies so much. It's almost impossible to keep it in any kind of a tune. And plus, it's probably as old as the building. But um, Bob has been checking on some electronic uh, pianos, not brand new ones, but ones that he's seen advertised, and he says we could get a good. Uh, a good one that would really be helpful down there. You wouldn't have to worry about weather affecting it at all. And uh, it can be under $1,000. And so I think if we could have $1,000 in the Christmas offering, that's what we'd purchase. And the choir could have something down there that when they practice, and even in the morning, sometimes with special groups, they go out to the Fellowship Hall. And that's not a whole lot better, but it's better than what's downstairs in the in the team room. And uh, so that would, that, that's what that offering will go to for the Christmas offering on the 18th, okay? So just pray about what the Lord, what part he'd have you to have in that. And uh, we'll collect that uh, special offering over and above what our normal offering is on December the 18th, okay? All right, let's pray for our offering tonight, shall we? Father, thank you for the privilege and the honor uh, to give back to you a portion of what you've given to us. And Lord, I thank you so much for uh, the giving people whom you've given to us here at Bible Baptist Church. Thank you for their faithfulness uh, to give to you what belongs to you. And over and above that, Lord, with many in faith promise and building endeavors and special offerings. And uh, Lord, I thank you for how you take care of the needs of your church through your people. And I pray your blessing on our offering tonight. I pray we give with cheerful hearts, knowing that you'll provide for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. your Bible tonight, if you would, to Ephesians chapter 6, Ephesians chapter 6, as we get back into our study on spiritual warfare, and particularly here with the armor of God in Ephesians chapter 6. 
<clears throat> the Bible says in verse number 12, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Father, add your blessing to the reading of our scripture here tonight. And Lord, I'm asking for your help as we open up your word this evening and we talk about this uh, piece of armor and really a piece of weaponry that you've given to each of us. And I pray that, Spirit of God, you'd help us tonight to understand exactly uh, how to handle the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and how important and vital this weapon is in our battle with the forces of darkness. As we fight Satan and his, and, and his hierarchy, his minions that do his bidding. And Lord, I pray that you'll open our understanding tonight and give us what we need this evening from your word. It's in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Now we're coming tonight to the only offensive weapon that we have in our combat with Satan. You know, uh, everything else up to this point has all been defensive in nature. Um, uh, the helmet, the breastplate, uh, our loins girt about with truth, uh, the shield of faith. Everything has been to protect us and, and sort of like to uh, uh, keep us from the onslaught of the enemy. But I want you to notice something, and I want you to go to Matthew chapter 16 for this, would you? First book of the New Testament, Matthew chapter 16. And Jesus uh, opens our uh, understanding a little bit uh, to our battle with Satan here. When he, Peter, of course, makes his great confession, when Jesus asked in verse 15 of Matthew 16, Jesus asked, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And then he talks about, he says, I, I say also unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church. Now watch. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, uh, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And again, we remember, gates are not offensive weapons. Gates are what you put around something when you want to keep somebody out from, from taking what's yours. You find many missionaries on foreign fields they, in their, their, their house they live in. They put up gates. They put up fencing all around their house. Why? Because if they don't, people will come in and help themselves and uh, take what isn't theirs. Okay, well, Satan has taken some things in people's lives. He has taken some people captive. He has taken some other areas of people's lives, and he puts a fence around those areas. And what God is saying is, listen, we can be on the offensive. The word prevail there, when it says will not prevail against it, it means shall not prove stronger. So the gates of hell shall not prove stronger uh, then the Christian who is desiring to take that, that, that land back are those things back in his life. So the stance that we take is not just to protect ourselves, though we do protect ourselves. We have that armor. But the stance that we take is, is we are invincible soldiers marching forward and marching really against the very forces of hell, and they will not prove stronger than we are. That's the promise. And so we're going to go, and we can capture people, and we can capture things that Satan has taken captive at his will, and we can recover them for the cause of Jesus Christ. That's the promise. 
that we have. You understand, all the armor that we have is for the front of the Christian. And so it's for us to be going forward. And, and on the offensive, we're protected. If, if you're turning and running, there's nothing for your back, my friend. He'll put the fire arrows right into your back. And you'll be a casualty in the war. And so the, the one weapon we have as we go forward and we're aggressive in our nature, there's one weapon He gives us. The Bible calls it the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Now, that's our aggressive weapon that we have. Now, think about something. Suppose, suppose you had an army that specialized only in defense. I mean, you gave the troops the best helmets, the best vests, the best armor uh, that they could have. I mean, bullet resistant as best you could, tanks with the thickest armor, jet planes to go fast, and great maneuverability to avoid detection by the enemy. Uh, that's great. Only one problem. No bullets, no guns, no artillery, no bombs, no rockets, nothing. Let me ask you a question. How successful do you think that army is going to be? Yeah, eventually they would succumb to the continual bombing and bullets and rockets of the enemy. And so, Christian, you, you can't just sit in a defensive position and think you're going to get victory. Eventually you'll succumb to the attacks of Satan and to the attacks of the rulers of darkness of this world. You'll, you'll get bombed into submission. So we have to go on the offensive. And the only weapon you have to go on the offensive with is the Word of God. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Now, the sword is the last piece of armor listed. And I think there's a reason for that. In fact, I think there's two reasons for that. Number one is, I believe we're not ready to go on the offensive until all the other pieces of armor are in place. Otherwise, we're vulnerable to be hit. And we're vulnerable for attack. And so, we're to be... Uh, the, the, the second reason, I think, is well, we're to be bold and courageous in our attack and in our battle with Satan. We're never to be flippant or presumptuous. We're to carefully... We, each week, we said you carefully, you, you consciously put on each piece of the armor. Making sure you understand, I'm in, I'm in a battle today. And by the way, if you're doing anything for God, you're in a battle every day. You better believe that. Now, let me show you a story here that the Bible records for us in Acts 19. Would you turn over there with me? Acts chapter 19. When we talk about being maybe a little bit presumptuous or flippant when we're dealing with the rulers of darkness of this world when we're dealing with spiritual wickedness. In Acts 19, notice verse number 13. The Bible says, Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, and overcame them, and prevailed against them. One guy against seven. Seven guys calling out an evil spirit who presumptuously thinking that they could just drop the name of Jesus on them and that would be good when they didn't know Jesus. And notice what happened. He leaped on them, he overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. 
And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling in Ephesus, and fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And whenever the name of Jesus is magnified, verse 18 will happen. Many that believed. They came, confessed, and showed their deeds. And many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. It's a great, great illustration of, first of all, the, 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 the power of the word of God, but it's also a great illustration. Listen, you don't, uh, evil spirits are not something you just play around with. You better, you better be very serious about it. You better understand that, that you better not just talk about Jesus, you better know Christ. And you better go to him in the authority of his word. And we'll talk about that weapon as we face them here this evening. Don't trifle with Satan's kingdom. If you, go, if you go careless and unprepared in your attack or advance against Satan and his forces, it will always prove disastrous, as it did for these seven sons of Sceva. All right? Now, let's talk about the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Number one, I want you to notice the power of the Word of God. The power of the Word of God. Most of you know John 1 and verse 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. Now we know from the book of Genesis that, that God said and it was so. God said and it was so. In other words, He spoke everything into existence. So in other words, God created everything by the power of His Word. Now, Jesus is the living Word. The Bible is the written Word. And they, they go together. You, uh, it, Jesus, being the living Word, spake the worlds into existence. He created all things, the Bible says, by the Word of His power. That's why... You, you see many of the same attributes of the Word of God as you do with God. For example, the Bible is eternal. God is eternal. And, and literally, listen, let me help you understand what that means. In, in the book of uh, Psalms, I believe it's Psalm 119, the Bible says forever, thy word is settled in heaven. Okay, heaven. That word settled means it's the very foundation of heaven. Now, when something is eternal, it means it does not only has no ending, it has no beginning. Just as God is eternal, God's Word is eternal. Okay? That's why, that's why don't, don't get caught up when people say, well, well, Paul knew there was a problem in the church, and so Paul wanted to address this. Paul didn't know such thing. Paul wrote down what the Holy Spirit of God told him to write down. Those words were already written a long, long time ago. God didn't, these men didn't just think of something to write. They say, Paul used this word because, Paul used that word because the Holy Spirit said, write that word. That's why Paul used that word. And, and, and we, get, we, we get all caught up in the wrong thing. It's eternal and it is powerful. God is powerful. He's omnipotent. He's all powerful. And the Bible is powerful. But listen, the Bible's not powerful because it's a guide to the Christian faith. The Bible is powerful because it's the words of God in print. It's, this is God's word. He told the people in Thessalonica, uh, listen, you, you receive this book not as the words of men, but as it is in truth, the words of God. I'm not taking the Bible tonight and saying it's just the words of man or, or some of it's the words of God, but no, my friend, all of it's the words of God. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Why do you think the devil has attacked the Word of God? If he can get us to think the Word of God isn't powerful, if he can get to think that it's not eternal, that it's not authoritative, then we'll never use it on him. And if we never use the weapon on him, he's, he, he'll, he will win the victory eventually in our life. 
You have to know the power of the Word of God. It has authority. The Bible says, and the Bible is immutable. What's immutable mean? It means it never changes. God is immutable. I am the Lord thy God. I change not. The Bible doesn't change. Oh, man changes, and man tries to change the Bible. Who do you think's behind that? You see, he wants to weaken the authority of the Bible. Because you, you get, do you think that God's behind 227 different translations of the English Bible? Where everybody's confused about, well, you know, and in many churches when they meet for Sunday school, they get in a little circle and there's 12 different versions of the Bible and everybody's reading their version saying, what's your say? Well, this is what mine says, what's your say? Well, this is what mine says, what is your say? And everybody's trying to figure out, well, how come it all says something different? Hey, things that are different are not the same. All right? And he's trying to weaken the authority of God's Word. And it's immutable. It, it doesn't change. It's it, God is omnipresent. And, and, and it means he's there. Hey, Psalm 48, the Bible says he's beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth. God, you know why? He's always available. He's always present. He's always near. Lo, I am with you always, even at the end of the world. He's always there. But so is the Word of God. We'll say more about that in just a minute. Uh, the Bible is also holy, just as God is holy. The Bible says it's a quick and powerful. The Bible is quick, powerful, sharpening two-edged sword. And it divides asunder between the soul and the spirit. The soul... My mind, my will, my emotions, what I think, what I want, what I feel. The Spirit, my Spirit in me, tells me what God wants, what God thinks, and what God feels. How do I know whether it's something I want and I think and I feel or whether it's something God wants and God thinks and God feels? You know how I know that? The Word of God will cut that line and he'll, it'll show me whether it's just goodwill. By the way, sometimes don't think that anytime you want something, it's something bad. As, you, as you, your soul, as it's being sanctified and being set apart for God, you won't begin to want bad things anymore. You'll want good things. But, but listen, just wanting a good thing still may not be the best thing. It may not be what God wants. Uh, goodwill and God's will are not always the same thing. And so how can I know the difference? How do I know whether this is, you know what? The Word of God. It's a discerner of the of the thoughts and intents of our heart. It will divide asunder between the soul and the spirit. It'll let you know. The Word of God will speak to your heart about that. So the Word of God, and the power of the Word, penetrates our life. The power of the Word of God does its work inside of us. It does its work on the inside and works its way out. It works on our soul, our spirit, our thoughts, our attitude. And when that happens, you know what it does? It cuts away Satan's grip on our life. So it cuts away the false ideas and cuts away the lies that Satan's told us for years. It, it cuts away his grip on our life and we find freedom. There is no substitute for the Word of God when setting your heart and your mind free from Satan. No substitute. Jesus, when he came out of the desert, after he was baptized, he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. I think, I think that was a supernatural fast. I, I, think he, I don't think he ate or drank for 40 days and 40 nights. Only, only a guy named Moses and Jesus are the only ones, I think, in the Bible that did that. But, but when he came out, remember who met him to tempt him? The devil was there. And the first thing he tempted with was, hey, have these stones become bread. I don't know about you, if I hadn't eaten for 40 days, some nice hot buttered rolls sound pretty good. Huh? Boy, he knew where to hit him, didn't he? He knew where to strike at him. And of course, Jesus quoted him, Deuteronomy 8, 3, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. See, he used his weapon the Word of God. He wielded the sword of the Spirit. You see, every temptation, you know that. 
every temptation brought a reply from God's Word. He didn't answer with his thoughts. He didn't, he didn't answer uh, just by his reasoning. He answered with the Word of God. And then the Bible says, the devil departed from him for a season. For a season. The devil is persistent. He'll be back. Don't ever let your guard down. He's waiting for that. And so, but what, but, but let's, let's focus on the other part. He left him. What caused Satan to leave? Yeah. Everything he asked, all he got back was Scripture. He said, oh, nothing, nothing to do here. I'm leaving. When he, when he came to Eve in the garden, he didn't get that, did he? She had a discussion with him. How'd that turn out? Not so well. Huh? Give him the Word of God. Give him, use your weapon. Let me give you number two. That leads us to this. We are to know the Word of God. We are to know the Word of God. The purpose of the Bible is for us to know God. It's pretty simple, isn't it? You're not going to know Him without knowing His Word. Did you know that it was accepted practice for devout Jewish boys in Jesus' day to memorize the first five books of the Old Testament? Yeah, Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Leviticus, Deuteronomy. How many of you do pretty good till you hit Leviticus? Huh? This offering and that offering and this oblation and that oblation and the sprinkling of this and that. They memorized it all. Why do you think when Jesus came out of that, listen, when he said, make these stones bread, and right away Jesus said, Deuteronomy 8, 3, man shall not live by bread alone, by every word to read out of the mouth of God. Didn't Jesus have the Old Testament scroll there and said, hold on here, Deuteronomy. Huh? No, he knew it by memory. And, and Jewish boys would have committed that to memory. And we think we're smarter now than they were. Think about that. But memorization, listen, memorization of God's Word is one of the most necessary disciplines we need in our homes and in our churches today. Your weapon may not always be available or within your reach when you need it. But if you have hid His Word in your heart, and you have memorized it and meditated upon it, you know what? Then when you need it, the Spirit of God can bring it up. And you'll have it ready to go. Without it, you're, you're, you have nothing to fight the enemy. All you can do is hunker down and hope you can outlast all the artillery that's coming at you. Memorize. Now, let me give you some... Tips. And by the way, can I help you uh, with what Satan does? Satan has attacked us in this area as well. Oh, I can't memorize. No, but if somebody asks your phone number, you can tell them. Most people, if somebody asks your social security number, you can tell them. If most people ask what your address is where you live, you can tell them. See, the devil, if, hey, if this was the weapon that would defeat me in battle and I was Satan, you know what I'd get to everybody else to believe? It doesn't do any good to memorize that. Or you can't memorize that. It's too hard. And a lot of people have bought into his lie. You memorize what you really want to memorize. You get to know what you really need to know. I got a feeling if somebody said, I'll give you $1,000 for every verse you memorize, I got a feeling some folks would get memorizing real quick. Well, that, that just shows where your heart is. You see how devil has deceived us? He's a liar. Oh, the Bible's a good book, you just can't understand it. That's why, that's why they want to come out with new versions all the time. Every time there's a new version that comes out, you know what it is? Easier to understand. They've said that for 50 years. 
And we're more ignorant of the Bible tonight than we ever have been. So it's a lie from Satan. Now, oh, the Bible, yeah, it's for salvation. But boy, there's, there's some parts of that. Boy, you're just never going to understand the Bible. That's not true. The Bible is absolutely written for us to understand it. It's for us, it's for us to know God. And so the devil attacks us in that area. Let me help you. Memorization. There's several things you can do. Number one, you can simply read the verse over and over and over again. You'd be surprised how often to, you read a verse enough times, you read a verse enough consecutive days over and over and over again, you'd be surprised all of a sudden you have that. I was reading, a, I was reading about that this week and, and a preacher was talking about that and he was saying, you know, he was amazed he had, he had a couple passages that he usually read when he went to hospitals, you know what I mean, and visited somebody. He would usually read a couple different psalms, and he found himself, he got to the hospital one day, and he, he didn't have his New Testament with psalms in it. He didn't have a Bible. So he went in and sat down started talking to the person, and, and he just started saying the psalm, and to his surprise, he could quote the psalm. Because he had done it so often, he didn't know he had memorized it. But he had memorized it just by repetition. They used to teach that repetition is the key to learning. And by the way, it still is. Over and over and over again. Most of you learned your arithmetic and your math facts by flashcards and you went over it and over it and over it and over it until it was just part of you. Amen? Well, why don't you memorize Scripture like that? Why don't you uh, write it on a 3x5 card? Write the scripture out on a 3x5 card and carry it with you. Hmm? Stick it in your pocket, put it in your purse, take it with you. Everybody waits somewhere during the daytime. Pull it out and look at it. Read it. Anytime you have a spare moment. It also helps to work with somebody else in memorization. Accountability is a great helper to memorizing. Accountability is a great helper to memorizing. Now, it'll help you immensely if you make sure that you understand what you're memorizing. Not just words on a page. You have to understand what is this verse saying? And there are verses in the Bible, just like Jesus, listen, when Satan tempted him to, to make these stones bread, Jesus didn't say, and, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Great verse that has nothing to do with stones and bread. It had nothing to do with hunger. There are certain verses that will target your particular, or the particular temptation that Satan is bringing your way. And you want to have the right ammunition. And so you want to, you're going to find some verses that will that'll deal with your particular thing that Satan is, is attacking you with. And you're going to go after him with the Word of God. And you do that by memorizing God's Word. And, and by committing it into your heart. You know, how many, ever, how many ever heard Lester Roloff when I say that name? Can I see your hand? Lester Roloff? Okay. Maybe about 15, 20 of you. So Roloff had an amazing ministry in, down in Texas. And he, had, he would take wayward, wayward boys and wayward girls. And, and, and the courts oftentimes, instead of sending them to, to juvenile or, or to jail, they, they would send them down to Brother Roloff. And down there, there'd be no TV, no television, no radio. That's, back in those days, you didn't have all the other electronic stuff. They didn't have any of that. You know what they had? He gave them a Bible when they got there. They would have scriptures to memorize. Anybody get to ever get to go here when the girls would sing and they'd come out and quote scripture? And uh, he'd get up, he'd say, Girls, Psalm 103. And boy, they'd start saying it. Girls, Psalm 127. Boom, they'd start saying it. He'd just get up, say the psalm, and boy, they'd, they'd quote it. They'd spend hours. What transformed their life? was memorizing, meditating on the Scripture. And, and meditating on the Scripture will help you, will give you an understanding of the Scripture. 
You'll begin to know what it's, what it's meaning, not just words on a page. So you'll be able to use it in your battle against Satan. I'm told, those of you who are in the military, and I'm told that we're in the military, and you're issued a weapon, that you have to know that weapon. I understand that uh, you have to be able to take it apart and put it back together. I even understand that in some cases they blindfold you and you have to take it apart and put it back together blindfold. Because there are times you may be in combat or in a war zone and you're in the pitch dark and you're going to have to do that. That's how well you're expected to know your weapon. How well do you know your weapon? How well can you wield your weapon? You know, there's, there's two verses in the Bible that deal specifically with meditation on God's Word. And let me clarify, that's meditating on God's Word. And meditating is just, just thinking again, going over and over in your mind. And it's not, it's not sitting in some weird position with your fingers like this, humming. That's not, that's not anything to do with the Bible, meditation, Okay. But it is maintained. Joshua 1.8 has Joshua is ready to take over for Moses. A very challenging job. And several times God has to tell Joshua to be strong and of a good courage. You can do this. But he said this to Joshua in Joshua 1.8. He said, Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. The only time success is mentioned in the Bible. And it has to do with meditating on God's Word. The other place that meditation is mentioned is in Psalm 1. Psalm 1, verse 1, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate. Oh, not sometimes? Not occasionally? Day and night. Day and night. Hard to do that when you watch TV three hours a night. Hard to do that when we listen to music or get on our cell phones for four or five hours a day. Hard to do that. And we wonder why we struggle so much in our fight against Satan. We're to, we're to know God's Word. We're to know what to use against Him. It's not our feelings that will stand against Satan. Feelings come and feelings go. And feelings are deceiving. My warrant is the Word of God. Naught else is worth believing. Use the Word of God. The devil, listen. The devil is perfectly happy for you to believe the Bible. Just so you don't live the Bible. Oh, he's happy to have it carry that, that book under your arm and say, Bless God, King James Bible. That's what I believe, brother. As long as you go out and cuss like a sailor at work tomorrow or light up a cigarette in the parking lot. He doesn't care what you say about the Bible. He doesn't care what you believe about the Bible just so you don't live the Bible. The Bible wasn't written for you and I just to know. It was written for us to live. It's not our discipline. It's not our dedication that will stand against Satan. Only the Word of God will defeat the enemy. That's why Satan will try to cast doubt on the Word of God. He will try to deny the Word of God. He'll try to deny that God has any authority over him. The best thing years ago somebody said, you know, you're if you're having a discussion with somebody and, and he says, I don't believe in guns, the best thing to do is use one on him. 
you don't believe in guns, I'll show you that, that guns, guns work. You understand? Don't, don't, when somebody says, I don't believe the Bible, you know what you do? Use the Bible. I've had, I've had people witness people, I don't believe the Bible. I said, well, let me just show you a few things. I just begin to give them the Bible. I, and sometimes I've said, listen, I know you don't believe it, but someday you may run into somebody who asks you how they can know to go to heaven. How can they be sure they're going to heaven? And at least in your realm of knowledge, you'll say, well, I had a guy show me from the Bible one time how you can be sure you're going to heaven, and then you'll be able to tell them. That's fair enough, isn't it? And then I begin to show them the Bible. And listen to me. I've seen men who said they didn't believe the Bible and as you share scripture after scripture after scripture, I've seen the tears start to come down their face. Because the word of God is powerful. Don't, don't underestimate the power and authority of God's word. And, and listen, know the Bible. Use the word of God. And there's times, listen, you're not going to have the Bible right there for you to go look up a verse. You've got to hide God's word in your heart. Your heart. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. See, it's with your entire being. It's got to mean something to you. You've got to be serious about defeating the devil in your life. Let me give you number three. We remember also, the Bible calls it not just the Word of God, but He calls it the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The one that makes the sword effective is the Spirit of God. We'll read Sunday, we'll be in Luke 22 for our favorite Bible chapter in Sunday school. And that's when the, they come to arrest Jesus in the garden. And, and one of them says, shall we take the sword? And it doesn't mention who it is, but we know from other accounts it's Peter. Remember what Peter did when he took his sword? Yeah, cut a guy's ear off. If Jesus wouldn't have been there to fix it and put it back on the guy's head, uh, there'd, have, there'd have been quite a mess that day and maybe all of the disciples would have been arrested and hung on crosses. He'd have been in trouble for sure. I mean, he listen, without the Spirit's direction, without any guidance from the Holy Spirit of God, you can take the Word of God and you can cut some things up, but it'll end up a mess. Some of you, when you first got saved, you were so excited about being saved, but boy, you took the sword of the Spirit and you really went after some people. You cut them up pretty bad. Remember those days? Some of you were like that. And then you, you say, boy, I'd, I might have hurt more than I helped. But wait a minute. About 50 days after Peter cut this guy's ear off, the day of Pentecost came, and he stood up wielding a different sword, didn't he? This time being filled with the Spirit of God. And this time one guy's ear didn't come off. About 6,000 years, 3,000 people heard the gospel and accepted Christ as their Savior. You know what the difference is? One time it was under the direction of the Spirit of God and the other time it wasn't. You want the direction of God's Spirit. He's the one that makes it effective in the battle. So to be effective in using the Word of God in the battle against Satan, we have to be controlled by the Holy Spirit. You don't fight spiritual battles in a fleshly way. Ask for the Spirit's help every day, many times a day. He'll give you the right verses to use. Can't tell you how many times that I sit in a counseling situation and someone's saying something and, 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 and while they're talking, I'm just saying, God, what am I going to say to them? Lord, what scripture should I use with them? And it's amazing the scriptures that the Lord comes to your mind and you'll, you'll begin to say the verse and you think, man, I didn't even know I remembered that one. That's the Spirit of God. He's there to help. Remember, He'll bring all things to your remembrance. But to remember something, you had to have learned it somewhere. You've got to put it in for it to come out. 
You can go into your files on your computer and you'll type up a little search box and you'll say, I'm looking for this. And you know what comes back? No file found. You know why? You never put it in there. If it isn't in there, it can't bring it up. If you never put God's Word in here, the Spirit of God can't bring it back to your memory. Now, it's also important to remember this. Don't resist the Spirit in one area while endeavoring to fight in another area. Here's the illustration. This is not mine. A, a, another minister used this, and I'll share it with you. He said this, a lady came for counseling under severe assault from the forces of darkness. He said, I used all the methods of warfare without success. In fact, he said, after several weeks of counseling, there was no improvement in her situation. She was memorizing the Word, praying faithfully, putting on each piece of the armor, but still seemed to be losing the battle. Finally, I asked her if she was resisting the Holy Spirit in some area of her life. And she hung her head. She admitted that she had a smoking problem. She said, wasn't a heavy smoker, but she said, I have not submitted that area of my life to the Lord. She did. Got on her knees and submitted that to the Holy Spirit. And he said the improvement in her life was almost immediate. The intensity of the battle subsided and she began to walk in victory. It's the Spirit of God that strikes the blow. When we use the Word of God, yielded to Him. Yield to the Spirit. Use His Word. And He puts the power in the Word of God. If you're grieving Him or quenching Him in some way, Satan will be quick to take advantage of you. Our victory is bound in the Word of God. Satan will always retreat as the Word of God is used against him. Always. Our problem, listen, church, our problem is not like many in this world who have no Bible at all. Some place in this world where they have a Bible and, and they've, they, they, they take just a few, a few pages of it and they pass it around to different members of the church. And what would happen is, when we come together, you'd get a different page tonight, and when you come back on Sunday, you'd trade that for some, some another page that somebody else has. And folks often will memorize those pages they get. They'll commit it to their heart, to their memory. That's not our problem. We've got it all right there. In fact, you got it all there, and you probably have some at home that you could have Bibles as well. Know what happens? The devil causes us to get involved in so many other things. Oh, I'd memorize the Bible. I'd read the Bible. I just don't have the time. If I was God in heaven, I think I'd shake my head. And Satan smiles. Says, it's just where I want it. Because if Satan can't make you bad, he'll make you busy. And if he can keep you busy and neglect God's Word, you'll end up being bad. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Let's pray together, shall we, Father? We bow before you in prayer now. Lord, I thank you so much for this wonderful offensive weapon that you've given to us. And God, I pray that we would realize the power of the Word. That we would know the Word of God. 
to memorize it and to meditate upon it in our life. That the Spirit of God could wield it and use it to strike the fatal blow against our enemy. We could charge the very gates of hell, the gates of Satan's kingdom, and capture people and things that he's taken captive, thinking that we can never get them back. But we can because of the power of your word. It will not prove stronger than your word. I pray the word of God, we would make commitments tonight, God, people in this room, to begin to memorize, meditate, read the word of God, our weapon, the sword of the Spirit. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I'll finish praying here in just a moment. I wonder how many folks tonight would say, Preacher, truth be known, I don't think I'm very proficient in handling my weapon. Haven't memorized it and meditated in God's Word like I ought to. Maybe that's why I struggle so much in my fight against evil and fight against Satan. But preacher, I understand tonight I can't just be all defensive. I've got to be offensive. And the way to do that is to wield the sword of the Spirit. I wonder if God has spoken to your heart tonight and say, Preacher, I, beginning tonight, I am going to set a course to memorize God's Word, to meditate on God's Word, to make sure I'm living God's Word. I'm not going to be resisting the Holy Spirit in one area of my life and still ask Him for help to win a battle in another area. I will submit every area of my life to Him that I might have victory in my spiritual battle. Pastor, God spoke to my heart tonight. Pray for me this evening. Will you put your hand up, Christian? Amen. Amen. That's wonderful. You may put them down. Let's stand together, shall we? Father, thank you for speaking to hearts tonight. And thank you, Lord, for the power of your word. Lord, I pray that it would have a great priority in our lives. We would not just be of those who say, yeah, I believe the Bible. We would be those who would recognize its power. And we would thirst to know the Word of God, and the God of the Word. But we know that the way we know you is through your Word. May we know the power it wields when we're yielded to the Spirit of God. Help each of us, Lord, to live the Bible we know. Give us the victory that's ours through Jesus Christ our Lord. Dismiss us now with your care, Lord. I I pray you'll help us to leave this place to be doers of the Word and not hearers only. Give us a good week, Lord. Help us to be about your business. Make us mindful of your presence with us as we go. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. Amen. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Higher ground. Let's sing that together, shall we? I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. My faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. God bless you. You're dismissed. Choir, come right on.